Okay, uh, I've been getting a lot of rattling about, uh, well, I'm not a bow bender, but Pamela hmm, needs some love. This is Jordan. We're at Austin Archery Country in Austin, Texas. So if you're in the Central Texas area, come here because they have everything you'd ever want. There's a few bows. They're one of the top uh, Matthews dealers in the country. And of course we have the Rocket Man because uh, why, the wouldn't, ranch affair again. <laughs> why wouldn't we have a Rocket Man? So I'm going to reverse the camera here in a second, but Jordan's going to tell me what he sees. Pamela's been shot and abused, dropped down, rolled down a mountain. Oh, my backpack. We'll talk about that later. Makes my stabilizer's got duct tape on it to hold it together because, you know, you just had to do a field repair. So I'm going to reverse the camera and then Jordan's just going to talk about what he's seeing on Pamela and then what he thinks we're going to have to do to Pamela and we'll shoot Pamela later. So maybe I'll be strong enough to pull it. Hang on. All right, guys. Um, Jordan in archery country here. Uh, just kind of show you what I see when I look at a bow getting ready to uh, get tuned. Um, my biggest area of concern is the center serve and D-loop area. Uh, it just looks well worn. Uh, I can see here that that, that that knot, that turn is pulling into that serving, which is going to cause us issues in there with knock pinch and knock fitment. Will it slip or come apart or both? <laughs> no, it just affect your arrow flight. Like, okay. I wouldn't say anything's going to break, anything's dangerous. It's just going to get worse. So I'm not going to punch my face and myself in the face like Brandon McDonald did. No, you're just going to watch <laughs> your arrows start drifting. Okay. Um, then maybe check out some other things, cam timing, um, you know, maybe adjust the lean. We'll shoot it through paper and see what it needs. Okay. But that's the big guy right there. And then you said down here, this cable is looking a little wavy. Yeah, it's looking a little wavy. It might be worth checking out. Um, it may be worth pulling that serving. It's usually a sign that maybe something's been broken in there. Okay. Um, but that is a high wear area, so... And you're just seeing my abuse, because as I said, I have duct tape on my stabilizer right there, but it stays together. And then the other thing I am concerned about is um, when I when it comes over the top, the you know it's very short, like the, the cams roll, and then I feel like I can't go any further. And I was talking to Jordan about that, and he says that my draw stops are probably just a little bit out of whack for me. So we're going to play with that. And so we'll move forward with that. I'm supposed to be 29 inches. If you measure me, right. but I've always shot 28 and a half better. And it, it was totally outcome based. It's just, I noticed that when I got somebody else's 28 and a half inch bow, <laughs> I did, it felt comfortable. So as you said, what constitutes a draw length? When arrows fly really good. All right, she's loosened up. Off we go with it. Now we're going to the string shop. That's what Jordan says. Because uh, that's where you work on strings. I don't know. Uh, serving jig here. So I'm able to put the string under pressure, um, you know, compressed air. And then I can wind and unwind these servings. Wrong way. Woo! That's a Barnett tool right there. Barnett like likes it. the nerd stuff. Zing. And you can see there that serving was cut. So when I pull it off, it just came off in two pieces there. Is that string? Is that just not wear? Yep. I'm constantly beating on it. D loop, you know, being tight. Tight. And Literally too small on the knot tight or tight D loops because it's tight on the on the serving. The, the tight D loop can cut the serving and then the serving bunches up and makes for too tight of a knock fit. Oh, it gets fat. Yeah. Huh. Every, everything like this gets squished up like that. Barnett, you're getting out genius here with the bow guy. So we got a genius bow guy and we got genius physics guy. I love it, man. It's going to get crazy. <laughs> I love it when I learn something. So what we've learned is you probably ought to check your serving between your D-loop and make sure it doesn't look like 
a bad hair day. It's interesting, I noticed that he checked the serving between the D-loop and then checked the serving down here to get a mm. sort of a comparison to see what wore out versus what was still good. And you noticed a big difference, right? It, it gives me a gauge of what what line to put here, what diameter. Ah, okay. So I know if this is a little too loose, I can step it up. So all of these are different diameters. Right. So what are you looking for? Just should it be just snug or should it be tight as hell or should it be? No, I don't want it tight. Like I want that good snap on there. Mm -hmm. I want it to be able to wiggle on its own. I don't want it, you know, free spinning like it is here. Right. It's very loose. Um, I got a good snap. I can wiggle it a little bit. Oh, no, you don't want it. You don't want this. I don't want a lot of, yeah, Left like right lateral, right. lateral play, but it's not getting hung up on itself. Okay. Apparently, I have a lot to learn. God, I hate bows. Can we just zero a 300 win mag and hand it to somebody and shoot stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many deer have been killed with my rifles at the ranch by other people, but they ain't gonna shoot my bow. everything lasts a little longer so when you flip it back toward me like that what does that do so I'm uh, overlaying it here and then five oh so it's not one homogeneous piece which would be more would tend to break more you're just reinforcing it basically pretty much okay that's cool and we'll assume that he's counting because he is whether he's counting or not, I don't care, but he knows it's every eight or whatever. That's a good number. Eight, 12, 46, whatever. <laughs> this is why you need a way above average person who cares about building bows, not just somebody. Austin Archery Country has been around for a million years. I am 52 years old and I used to hide at Austin Archery Country. Don't tell anybody on my pager when I was, uh, you know, in my late 20s. So it's been here forever. Well established. Hey, I'm just warning you, Jordan, you're gonna get some hate. Because if, if we were painting doorknobs, the best doorknob painter on the earth that sits with his grandmother's, in his grandmother's basement would send us hate mail. So just letting you know. Uh, it means we're doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> that last loop was seven, 30 seconds too wrong. I like it. Okay. I like it too, because I know that it's not all bunched up. Sweet. Draw stops back on and we'll go play and act like I can shoot a bow and arrow. So he advanced them a little bit. I can see the original mark. And I guess we'll play with that in the range, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. But it, that is not the way to adjust the draw length. It, no. It's kind of a half-ass way to do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, small amount. What does that tell us? Because if I tilted that that third arm thing, it would screw up the level. So how do you know level means anything? Um, just, it's a starting point to put okay. the arrow perpendicular to the string. Okay. So you're spitballing where the D loop should go. Right, I'm gonna use another level. <clears throat> I'm 
That's okay. a pretty good starting point. Fair enough. The engineers, they like the, they like the levels and stuff. They think that that gravity thing matters. Got to have a known starting point. <laughs> high performance, high maintenance. It's like a BMW. So I assume you are creating the space that my knock will update will take up, and then the D loop will go around that. That's my spitball on this. Yep. Good. I'm learning something. I've not done that before. I've always just put them on and dealt with it. Gives that D loop something to lean against. Oh, when you're tying it. Well, just as you're pulling that bow back, it's not cranking in and, and pinching that knot. Oh, you're gonna leave that there and leave put the D loop on, or is that gonna come off? No, this will stay on. Oh, really? So it'll be on either side. You're gonna tie two of those? Yeah, I can do two. Well, no. Tell me what you would normally do, though. Um, yeah. I mean, two is better than one. Okay. Huh. Well, I learned something new today. So the D loop will be like that. You know, it's a rough estimate, and these will be keeping it from pinching. From sliding in, yeah. Hmm. Let's let that bottom stop to get our valley and let off how we want it. And Were you feeling the top roll over different than the bottom? Um, or what'd you I just have the top on there just for reference. Yeah. But I'm mainly trying to set this one to where I want it and then I'll match it with that top one. So draw stops used to not be a thing. And so just completely feel or? You know, it would just, you pull back and it was just back, you were back there uh -huh. and you kind of had to get super consistent. There were other mess strategies to get it done, but then they put these stops on there and it actually hits the limb. Right and stops it, so they call it the back wall. Is that current technology for every bow now? Most of them stop? have something to either, make them stop. Either a limb stop or a cable stop. However it is, it stops. Mm -hmm. So you really can pull into it and it just stops. Whereas in the old days, you drew to your draw length and you, if you wanted to give some extra juice, you could you just-, just keep pulling back. <laughs> You could keep pulling back in the, this long time ago, but it's more consistent, right? If it stops in the same spot every time, then anybody's consistent. So, yeah. It helps, at least yeah. with that part. It's crazy, what I found it still between... as long as it did to, to reach that yeah, right. seemingly pretty obvious yeah. point in the technology, yeah, right. right? Well, it has to be accepted by the community. That's one of the things I realized that the, that the community is pretty tight and they're, they're not going to accept something that's too far out. For sure. There's maybe no soon. more passionate of like a, a like sporting um, you know, like, not to say there's fly rod guys, yeah. <laughs> fly guys, never, 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 never. <laughs> you hang out with the fly guys and you get yourself in a fight. Right. What I noticed between limb stops and cable stops, I haven't found one that's more consistent. I used to think limb stops would be, but your, your, whatever your pulling weight is, is your pulling weight. It's going to change that cam, change the shot. So it doesn't, it's a different feel, but same result. So you don't think there's any superior one? You need you need it to, to, to stop. It's the best one for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. That's cool. what we like. And if you don't know what you're talking about, then just shoot the bow you get in your hands. Yeah. Perfect. That's the best one. <laughs> <laughs> if you only have one. We got in here and got to shooting. And uh, Jordan obviously knows about knock tuning, which is good to know. So you should come to Austin Archery Country because somebody here knows about knock tuning. That's a, not a normal thing. And he's actually just told us that some of the guys in the shop he said, my arrows aren't flying right. And he said, you can turn the knocks, it's free. So on my channel, I have a uh, four fletch video and a process and I encourage you, whether it's four or three fletch, if they're shooting a little crazy through paper, which we're doing a fletched tune of Pamela after all the adjustments we made. And we're gonna walk up here and show you what we did. And we let Jordan shoot my bow. And of course, since the monkey changed, nothing personal, <laughs> the shooter changed. He shot completely different tear than I did. You shot tail high, not much. So I started out, <clears throat> I started out tail left and the knock, these are knock tuned on my Cure, which is a completely different bow. 
So I bear shaft knock tuned that arrow on a cure. It's not as high a velocity. It's got a longer brace height. It's a completely different machine, but I was shooting it and I got this crazy left hand tear. So I said, hmm, I did it again. And Jordan was kind enough to say, well, looks like the same idiot's shooting the bow, so same results. So I handed it off to Jordan and he got same nocturne, tail high, because the human changed. So he's holding it different than I'm holding it, may not be his draw length. We're close to the same size, and I think he's about the same draw length. He's not 6'8 or anything. So it was close enough, right? And he shoots a lot of bows. So then I rotated the knock, one quarter turn like that. That's why it's handy to have a mark on the knock and on the shaft, you know where you started. And my tear went almost to a bullet hole. I would live with that because I'm shooting the bow. You have to accept that you're human. And that's one of the things everybody, I get a lot of emails and messages about, oh, my bear shafts aren't flying perfect, not every one of them. And Jordan, why do you think that is? So let's roll over here. We discussed this earlier. If you shoot a dozen arrows, what do you, should you expect? I expect to get two or three arrows out of a dozen that do not tune the same as the rest because the arrows are made millions of feet at a time and it's not a perfectly consistent manufacturing process, okay? We wish that it was, but if you were running the business, you would run them a million feet at a time. So what do you usually do? How do you orient your arrow? If, you get a, if you're shooting a dozen and you bear shaft, knock to every one of them, what do you do mentally with your set? Like you, let's say you number every one of them, you know how, where they're at, what do you do after that? Um, so I build them up, you know, length, insert, um, square the knock ins, put my knocks back in, and I'll just pick one arrow, I'll tune to that arrow, and then once I'm shooting a good bullet hole through paper with a bear shaft, mm -hmm. I'll grab, you know, the rest of my arrows yep. and put them all through paper, one after another, and rotate them, you know, probably 90 degrees at a time. Every individual arrow. Yep. And okay. there's usually two or three that you have to work on. So this is key, and I'm glad Jordan said it, and I didn't really ask him earlier we were chatting, so we're kind of reproducing this, because I'm a storyboard, boring. But um, he said, you know, you gotta shoot every one of them, whether you're fletched or bear shaft. Don't shoot one and then take your dozen and say, everything's good, right? And Jordan, I think you do what I do, which is my, the best of the best, I hold, those, I hold four out. And that's hunting arrows. They're done. I never shoot them. That's what I do. And then your clunkers, what do you do with those? You just kind of fling those around. Yeah. Shoot shots. them at your friends or whatever. Exactly. <laughs> so what I actually do, if I have two that misbehave, because they're usually really close, but they're not perfect, I'll actually mark the fletching. Or I'll put a big Sharpie mark that's orange or something on them, and I know that's like a play arrow, right? Bomb it out there at 75, and you don't have your sights zeroed, and you don't really care. So I take the best arrows out and I set four aside. Always they hunt, they never hunt, they never get shot again. I don't want any dings, nicks, errors in them. And then I fling the other ones around, I do. But so back to the, to the tears. Um, I rotated the knock all the way around. So the starting point was here and I went to there and I got that. And then when I went here, okay, so it started here and I was work, working clockwise. When I got to there, it tore the other direction. Is that right? Yep. So do this knock tuning piece. It's one little more element. The reason why you want to do this is because if you're, when you put a wing on the front, when the arrow comes off and it takes off, you got lift out here, pushing into the atmosphere, you got lift back here and it doesn't match the straighter that thing and the more consistent you can get the arrows tearing, they should all tear about the same. That means it's gonna launch exactly the same and then when you zero and shoot broadheads, you'll hit where you're aiming at, which is the key. So crazy tears means one's going this way, one's going that way, and Jordan shooting my bow, the first test, he was gonna be shooting my bow that way. Was it a, was it a five inch tear? No. but. I don't know what hit, if Jordan shot my, us another arrow, would it do that or would it keep doing that? The only way to find out.
And I think Jordan would agree. Is to shoot your arrows <laughs> and not to them oh, yeah. after you play with them. Okay, that's enough. I have to go be an adult now because I have a real job. So, Jordan, thank you. Yes, sir. Thanks for putting up with us because uh, I'm not easy to hang out with. So, see ya.